Hey family, this is David Lee. I want to talk with you briefly from chapter number seven from the book, Sunday Morning Stick Up, what your pastor doesn't want you to know about tithes. The title of this chapter is, can you see that? Let me get it real close for you there. Can you see that? Yeah, you got it. Mm Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what we're going to talk about for the next few moments. All right. Now, the basis of our scripture is going to come from St. John chapter 10, verses 7 through 15. And I want to show you something in this passage of scripture that you may not have considered before. So the question here is, when Jesus says in St. John chapter 7, or St. John chapter 10, rather, that the thief cometh, but not for to to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to steal, to kill, and to destroy, who is the thief? that Jesus is referring to. All right, now that everybody's got an opportunity to give their answer, you give an answer, right? I mean, you know I'm asking the question. I know I'm on camera and I can't see you, but that still doesn't mean you don't have to answer the question. (laughs) Who was Jesus speaking to, referring to in St. John chapter seven when he says the thief comes but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. All right? Got your answers? Now, most people say that the thief Jesus referred to is the enemy or Satan. But when you read the Bible for yourself, which is what the book really is about, it's about reading your Bible, getting back to reading the scriptures and understanding the scriptures for what the scriptures actually say versus quoting scriptures that have been interpreted to you for you where they've given you the meaning of the scriptures. All right. So here, let's, let's, let's just go to your Bibles. St. John chapter 10, verses seven through 15. And we're going to read it and listen to what it says in, in the King James version. Then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. That's understandable, right? Listen to this now. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, what Jesus does here is he does a contrast and comparison between two types of shepherds, between two types of leaders. He says that the thief comes and then he gives the agenda of the thief. And then he says, I as the shepherd come and then he gives his agenda and what he's going to do as the shepherd. What we are looking at here is a description of two different kinds of shepherds. One is a good shepherd. The other one is a bad shepherd. And if we can put it in today's terms, one is a good pastor. The other one is a bad pastor. One has a good healthy agenda for the people that he or she leads. And the other one has a not so good agenda for the people that he leads. Listen to this. I'm going to read further. He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Listen to what Jesus says in comparison between these two individuals. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling. Now, a hireling is a term that is used for an individual who preaches for money. He says, There's a difference between being a shepherd versus being a pulpiteer, you see, because a shepherd cares for the sheep. A pulpiteer, well, you can't even get a meeting with that guy. A shepherd visits and makes sure that he spends time praying and studying the word of God that he might deliver a good, healthy word to the people on Sunday morning. I'm going to talk your language, okay? But... A hireling or the thief, because he is not a good shepherd, he waits till Saturday night to study. (laughs) 
He's not really concerned about getting rhema word from God that he might feed the people of God. A good rhema fresh word from God. The thief comes but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, the good shepherd, which is who I am, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Listen to what he says. But he that is an hireling, this is a comparison between two types of leaders. But he that is a hireling, a pulpiteer, someone who doesn't keep office hours during the week, you can't get counseling sessions scheduled with this kind of pastor. This kind of pastor won't marry you. This kind of pastor charges you to bury your family members. Mm, he's a hireling. He's in it for the money. It's going to cost you to get married. It's going to cost you to get buried. It's going to cost you to attend the church. Listen to this. He says, but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd. You see the contrast? He is talking about two kinds of leaders. He's not talking about the enemy. He's not talking about Satan, as most people assume. He's talking about two leaders. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, this guy sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Why does the hireling, why does this guy who holds the office and the position of pastor, why does he see trouble coming into the lives of the people that he leads, but he does not actively engage to help to save their marriage? Uh -oh. And he does it because he cares not for the sheep. That's why this kind of pastor behaves the way that this kind of pastor behaves. It's because this kind of pastor really doesn't care for the sheep. This pastor only does what he does for money or what she does for money. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the father knows me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Let me tell you something. A good pastor will come see about you. A good pastor will make sure that you and your family are all right. A good pastor will hear about the trouble that's going on in your marriage. And even if he personally can't fix it, he will motivate his resources to ensure that some help gets to you and to your wife and to them babies so that your marriage doesn't end in divorce. All right. Now, we're talking about the thief that cometh, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. This reminds me of a passage of scripture that I read over in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and a discussion that the Apostle Paul had with the church at Corinth. So some trouble had broke out over there and they were starting to say that Paul had come there and had taken advantage of them and they were upset. Well, Paul had gotten wind of it and Paul wrote a letter to address it before his visit, his next, his third visit to this particular church. And I'm just going to read it for you. Listen to what, what the Apostle Paul says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He says, verse 11, I'm going to start there. He says, I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. He said, I should be getting accolades from you, even though I'm the least of all of the apostles. And even though I'm the least of the apostles, he says, I'm not coming up short in this ministry thing. He says, for what is it for what is it written? You were inferior to other churches. For what is it wherein you were inferior to other churches, except that it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. Listen to what Paul says here. I'm going to read it again. He says, for what is it wherein ye were in inferior to other churches? Except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. Forgive me of this wrong. It is almost as if Paul is interjecting sarcasm into the text here. So he's asking them a question. He says, so in what way have I made you inferior to other churches? By not being a burden to you? Oh, well, forgive me for not being a burden to you. He says, behold, the third time and I'm ready to come to you 
and I will not be burdensome to you. This is in alignment with his statement. He says, I'm not, I'm coming again the third time and I'm not going to be burdensome to you again this time. Watch this. He says, as a good shepherd, as a good healthy leader in ministry, he says, for I seek not yours, but you. Paul says, I don't want your stuff. Paul says, I want you. He says, as a leader and a minister of the gospel, I am not playing games to get deep into your pockets. He says, my coming to visit your church has nothing to do with what's in your pocket. Paul says, my coming to visit you has everything to do with you. Listen to his counsel now. Verse 14, he says, for the children ought not lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. He says, even though I am pouring myself out and being spent for you, he says, I'm not feeling the love in return. But even though I'm not feeling the love in return, I am not abusing you by raping you and robbing you of your resources when I visit you. Why is this so important? It's because during this holiday season, I want you to be on the lookout for the wolf. I want you to be on the lookout for the hireling. I want you to be on the lookout because they know that you are in a giving frame of mind, that this is a given season. And so all kinds of gimmicks are going to come out of the woodwork to get your money. But don't you fall for it. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. He says, did I make a gain of you by any of them whom I sent unto you? He said, even when I sent ministers of the gospel to come to your church, he says, even they didn't take advantage of you because that's not my heart. He said, I desire Titus and with him I sent a brother. Listen to the question he asked them concerning concerning ministers who go into churches and vacuum up all of the resources of that church, leave them a word and leave them broke. I'm just saying this is the Christmas season. I want you to be on the lookout. Listen to what he says. Verse verse 18. He says, did Titus make gain of you? Walked we not in the same spirit? Walked we not in the same steps? Paul says, even the fellas that I run with, even the guys in my close knit circle like Titus, who I sent in my stead, even when he came to you, he didn't take advantage of you trying to get all of your money. Let me tell you something. Ministry focus has been and always should be about the embitterment of the lives and the souls of people. It is about being a new creature in Christ. It is about preaching a message of health and, 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 and wholeness to a people, whether they have money or not, to a people, whether they have status or not. Your ability to preach at a particular location to a group of people should not be based on the size of that congregation or the amount of money they'll be able to raise for you during the offering. That is foolishness. So, during this holiday season, I've come to caution you against greedy preachers. In this book, we talk about it. In the book, Sunday Morning Stick Up, what your pastor doesn't want you to know about tithes. In chapter number seven, there it is. In chapter number seven, we talk about greedy preachers. I want to continue this discussion with you, my brothers and sisters. And I want us to dive deeper into what the scriptures say. Not what, this, what someone told you that the scripture said, but what the scriptures say for themselves concerning those who minister the gospel of peace. Listen, this is David Lee. It has been my pleasure to share this time with you discussing the word of God. Let's go do what God has called us to do. God bless you.